Nebraska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Over the weekend, Fairbanks experienced some of the coldest temperatures yet this winter season. Now, temperatures are expected to warm up, but not for long. New Center 11's weather anchor Mike Schultz joins us with the latest. Mike, what's going on? <laughs> Actually, there is relief in sight. Oh. We're looking at temperatures to be a little warmer tonight, 30 below for the overnight low. Mm -hmm. Still going to have the ice fog, unfortunately. Yeah. But the good news is tomorrow, looking at temperatures of 10 below, and then further on down the week, temperatures will be in the teens above. Hmm. Here's why. Okay. Take a look at our satellite picture today. We'll show you just exactly what we're talking about. As you can see here, look at all the moisture coming up in the southwest. That also means warm air and clouds. Clouds help trap the warm air that we have from escaping and the cold air from moving in. And that's what we're looking at for the next few days as uh, this system slowly works its way back into Canada and we say goodbye and farewell to that, that system. We are, like, look, like I said, looking at temperatures to warm up considerably from what they have been the last few days. Now, the biggest problem, of course, we've had today and the last few days is mm -hmm. ice fog. Yo, you've got more on that. Yeah, it's uh, really affecting the driving uh, capabilities yeah. out there. More severe weather conditions in the interior have led to dangerous driving conditions. Now, sub-zero temperatures, icy road conditions, and dense ice fog have made travel hazardous on the Richardson Highway and in areas of Fairbanks uh, all over. Warnings of caution were sent out via Nixle by the Fairbanks Police Department and Fort Wainwright to let residents know of the danger. Many motorists were driving in the fog with their headlights off. Now, despite the warnings and multiple accidents have been reported. Towing companies in the interior also were very busy with some having up to 20 tows scheduled in a matter of 30 minutes and over 40 more waiting for help. The National Weather Service said visibility was reduced to less than a quarter mile in many areas. The sub-zero temperatures are said to continue into this evening. A local realtor, former candidate for state house and member of the Fairbanks North Star Borough <coughs> Planning Commission has been charged with driving under the influence. David Pruse, who ran as a candidate for state house in last November's election, was arrested early Sunday morning. Fairbanks City Police stopped Pruse at 1251 a.m. on Phillips Field Road after allegedly rolling through a stop sign. A sobriety test was administered to Pruse and a blood alcohol level of 0.12 of 0 0.120 was detected, more than the legal limit of 0 0.08. Pruz is a member of the Fairbanks North Star Borough Planning Commission. Alaska prison officials have refused to release information into the death of serial killer Israel Keys. Officials with the prisons have refused to comment on the particular question of how the 34-year-old Keys obtained a razor prior to his jail cell suicide. The State Department of Corrections denied a public records request from the Associated Press that seeks to determine whether Keyes was allowed to have a razor, which he used to cut his wrist. The state cites prisoner confidentiality and, quote, anticipation of litigation, end quote. Keyes, who along with cutting his wrist also strangled himself, was found dead in his cell on December 2, 2012, while awaiting a March trial in federal court in the 2012 killing of 18-year-old Anchorage barista Samantha Koenig. The State Task Force on Humic Trafficking met today in Anchorage to discuss the recommendations they will include in their final report. The group has spent much of the year holding public meetings in communities most affected by trafficking. The State Task Force is working to gauge the prevalence of human trafficking and prostitution in Alaska, as well as services available to help victims. Experts say that sex trafficking is notoriously underreported and have testified that teenage victims are often too afraid and embarrassed and sometimes too addicted to drugs to come forward. It's really a global problem. There's uh, tens of millions of, of uh, victims around the world. Uh, many of them are underage. Uh, many of them are trafficked uh, uh, for labor, forced labor. Many are trafficked uh, for sex. All right, when we come back, hearings have been set for input on oil tax legislation. And drug testing for certain recipients of public assistance could be required. Stay with us. This edition of the Fairbanks Evening News is brought to you by Northland Hearing Services. Better hearing with a human touch. Welcome back. 
A co-chair of the House Resources Committee expects to take up the governor's oil tax bill in tandem with the Senate. Representative Eric Feige says hearings will begin February 11th. That's when Senate Resources is expected to get the bill. A special Senate committee is currently holding the hearings on the measure with a goal of advancing it by February 7th. Feige said the current plan is to have the bill move on parallel tracks in both chambers. He said he's optimistic about a bill emerging from this legislature, but said lawmakers must make sure it's the best bill possible. He said at a news conference Friday, if a good idea is proposed in his committee, it will be incorporated, regardless of whether it came from a majority or minority member. A ceremony has been held for Alaska Army National Guardsmen headed to Kuwait. A ceremony was held for Alaska Army National Guardsmen Sunday morning in Anchorage at the Alaska National Guard Armory on Joint Base Elmendorf Richardson for 60 Guardsmen. The soldiers are from Alpha Company, 1st Battalion, 207th Aviation Regiment. Alpha Company will spend their first three months training at Fort Hood, Texas before spending the next nine months stationed in Kuwait. The company is expected to return home sometime in January of 2014. A Wasilla lawmaker has proposed allowing drug testing for certain recipients of public assistance. Representative Wes Keller in a sponsored statement says Alaska substance abuse costs are staggering. He says while the Department of Health and Social Services must provide public assistance to those in need, it's not appropriate to provide assistance without knowing whether that there will be a fueling whether they will be fueling an addiction problem. The department could deny or suspend assistance to those who test positive and don't comply with a treatment program or those who refuse testing. Third parties could manage aid for those subject to suspension or denial if their families are eligible. Senator Johnny Ellis, a Democrat from Anchorage, is working to provide funding to complete the construction of upgraded engineering facilities at the UAF and UAA campuses. The 27th Alaska Legislature financed the reconstruction of the outdated facilities. Senator Ellis stated that the industry faces challenges in recruiting and retaining outside engineers. He was quoted to say, quote, we have heard from completing these projects is a common sense investment that will create more opportunity for our young people to live and work in Alaska, end quote. Average retail gasoline prices in Alaska have fallen 1.7 cents per gallon in the past week, averaging $3.58 a gallon yesterday, according to Gas Buddy's daily survey of 398 outlets in Alaska. This compares with the national average that has increased 4.5 cents per gallon in the last week to $3.31 a gallon during the last month and stands 6.7 cents per gallon lower than this day one year ago. Gas Buddy operates alaskagasprices.com and over 250 similar websites that track gasoline prices at over 140,000 gasoline stations in the United States and Canada. Well, <clears throat> there will not be any fishing for early run king salmon allowed this summer on the lower Yukon River. Now, the Alaska Board of Fisheries is trying to rebuild the Yukon River's dwindling king salmon runs. The first pulse of kings usually hits the river in early June. Now, the Department of Fish and Game has closed or restricted king salmon fishing on the first pulse of Yukon kings three out of the past four years. Fishery managers are trying to get more fish to the Canadian spawning grounds. However, the previous closures were by emergency order and based on the department's preseason projection for the King Run. Even with these restrictions, Alaska has failed to get enough fish into Canada. A new program by Governor Sean Parnell to transform the education system in Alaska has rewarded millions in student scholarships. The state has paid nearly $8.7 million under the program and was created in 2010 but first funded in 2011. Around 1,900 students have received Alaska Performance Scholarships in the past two years. Released in a report, college freshmen who received these scholarships took fewer remedial courses, hours, and more total hours than any other in the University of Alaska system. Scholarship, scholarships awarded under this program must be used at colleges or career and technical institutes in the state of Alaska. A joint base Elmendorf Richardson pilot carried out a special mission last week after hearing a nine-year-old boy's wish. The boy, McCaden Gallagos, wished for a letter to be carried as close to heaven as possible for his father, Army Staff Sergeant Justin Gallagos, who was killed in action in Afghanistan in 2009. Now, each year the family celebrates the birthday of his father, January 24th, with a special event, and this year a letter made it to the skies. F-22 pilot Lieutenant Colonel Brian Baldwin took the note written on red construction paper to the skies on his father's birthday to complete the wish. Now, nine-year-old Max says he plans to continue the special tradition and is still coming up with ideas 
for next January. That's really nice. That is very sweet. Yeah, very very touching. You know what was very sweet this weekend? Another sweep. That oh, yeah. Was, oh. oh, yeah. Man, <laughs> we talk about a hockey fight sports cast. Um, some huge victory, victories for our interior hockey teams. We'll have full details coming up in sports, especially that sweep. Brought to you by the Law Office of Rita T. Alley. Peace of mind through professional legal services. Hello, Interior. Alaska Joe Cook here in the sports seat for you on a magnificent Monday. And you know what that means. It's time for your weekend recap. The big story this weekend has been the play of the Nanak hockey team. The King of the Bears are playing like kings of college hockey right now after closing out Friday night's game on defense with the 2-1 win over Northern Michigan Saturday would not be as close. Trailing 1-0 and at the 1534 mark in the first close and Bet got the Nanix on the board with the goal in the second period. It was a scoring fest with three goals for the Nanix. Within six minutes of each other, Tyler Morley scored the go-ahead at 5.06 mark of the second period. Beck scored again at 10.20, assisted by Colton Pareko and Andy Toronto, which would prove to be the game winner. Pareko added an insurance goal at the 11.21 mark for a 4-1 Nanak lead. The Wildcats scored on a shorthanded goal later in the second, but John Keeney closed the door in the third period with his saves. The final 4-2 UAF, six wins in a row the last time that happened was the 2009-2010 season, but this is the first time in program history that the Nanix have swept three straight series in the CCHA. The Nanix are now tied for fourth in the CCHA with Ferris State. UAF is getting a lot of love from the pollsters and it's well-deserved. The USCHO has them at number 20 in their pairwise rankings. The Nanix are tied for 11th. Colton Beck has, was named the CCHA Offensive Player of the Week today as well. Beck hadn't scored in 12 games, but scored three in the Wildcats series and both game winners for the Nooks. Next for UAF, at Miami, who swept the Nanooks in the Carlton Center in November. For now, the streaking Nanooks are just keeping it simple. Since we got back from Christmas, we've just stuck to what makes our team successful, and that's hard work, good defensive play, and just keeping it simple. Um, Coach Ferg really stresses that those three things, and I think um, it's showing in the win call right now. Now I look back on the three sweeps, and it, it really isn't actually too surprising because um, you go back in the locker room and you look around, and it's these guys are all pulling the same way, and and they literally love each other, and it's it's just phenomenal to be a part of it. In high school hockey, another team made a run in the second period like UAF. The Dog Bowl was on the ice Saturday as Lathrop hosted rival West Valley in the regular season finale. It was senior night for the Mallee Mutes as Maxwell Blankenship and Ian Morey, the two seniors on the team, were recognized. West Valley was not paying homage to those seniors with the first goal to open the game going to Troy Munson. The Wolfpack Jr. Munson finished with two goals and an assist, but Matt Max Blankenship would say, hey, respect my senior night, man. He his goal here beat Matt Taylor to even things at one all. And then the second period happened and West Valley would just better their rivals, scoring three unanswered goals, which were proved to be the difference. West Valley wins four to one. The Wolfpack finished six and zero in the Rail Belt Conference and secured the number one seed in the conference tournament this weekend in the Patty Center. The Wolfpack seem ready to make a deep postseason run. We just, I don't know, when they scored that goal, we all were just so down. We needed to get some energy, and we, coach told us we just needed to get out there, and we got a lot of energy and just buried them. It was great for us, like, creating offense there, making my job a lot easier, a lot less pressure off me and everybody else. Like, we were really smart defense zone. One mislap led to a goal, but other than that, we did really well out there. Like, we got pucks to the net, and that's what we need to do versus anchors teams. We have a chance to go far in state, and, like, we proved it out there. We're one of the best teams in the state. Also in the high school hockey, the Monroe Catholic Rams lost to Houston by one goal. The final 2-1, to one. the loss drops the Rams to third in the Greatland Conference. Houston and Hutchinson finished on top and will get buys. Monroe will host a playoff contest against the last place teams. The winner of that game gets a spot in the state tournament. And the Ice Dogs continue to play some great hockey as well. 
winning seven of their last eight games. The latest trio of wins came on the road in Fresno, California. In a three-game series, the Ice Dogs were just dominant against the Monsters, winning 7-3 on Friday and 8-3 on Saturday. Sunday night's game went into overtime as the Monsters tried to go down with the fight. But the Ice Dogs will prevail with a big rally and get the win 3-2. In overtime, the Ice Dogs did their damage in the third period down 2-0 until Patrick Newell's goal cut the deficit to 1. And Lonnie Clary, he tied it with a goal at the 15-45 mark. Garrett Clement scored the game winner 40 seconds into the overtime period. The Ice Dogs had a perfect penalty kill and 38 shots on goal. Now the Ice Dogs are one point behind Wenatchee in the West. And guess who the Dogs play next? Wenatchee on the road against the Wenatchee Wild. The North Pole Patriots won the Mid-Alaska Conference title in wrestling this weekend. We'll have full results on tomorrow's sportscast. And former Nanak goalie Chad Johnson started tonight for the Phoenix Coyotes. You can catch that on NHL.com. Last time I checked, the Coyotes were up 1-0 over Nashville. And that's it for sports tonight. Stay cool, Alaska. Mike Schultz has your full weather forecast coming up next, and we'll catch you next time. Welcome back, everyone, to the Fairbanks Evening News. It's time for a look at the weather. And as you can see, we're starting off with our photograph tonight. This one's sent in by Fabian Kiern, a frigid sunset. In other words, beautiful sunset in the background with the clouds in the moving across in front of it, the cold temperatures. Speaking of cold temperatures, here's what's going on at the airport right now. 38 below after a high of 32 below. The overnight low, 51 below. Yeah, it was that cold. 42 for the uh, record high in 1945, 60 below in 1933. Sunrise this morning at 9.49. Sunset 4.22 this afternoon, which works out to six and a half hours, a little more than six and a half hours to daylight, a gain of six minutes from yesterday. What's going on across the rest of the state? Well, you can see we have cloudy skies over southeast Alaska, rain and snow around Kodiak Island, blizzard conditions around the Bethel area, and up and down the west coast, uh, looking at partly cloudy skies to the north of Bethel, with clear skies at Barrow, Fort Yukon, 36 below, and clear skies. What's going on lower 48? So quite a bit of weather to talk about tonight. Rain over the Pacific Northwest, thunderstorms gathering momentum across parts of Texas, and snow across the central plains, while the eastern half of the country looks pretty good. On the satellite radar, you can see once again, look at the storm clouds gathering across Texas. That's helping to fuel some very powerful storm system uh, expected to develop there tomorrow. In fact, our latest map is showing that looking at a lot of thunderstorm activity, moving out ahead of this system, and much colder air coming in behind it across the Great Lakes. And as far as our overall picture for later on this week, the jet stream way up to the north, helping to bring cold air in from Canada once again across the northeast and across the Great Lakes. Well, back to Alaska for tomorrow over the northern sections, mostly clear for Barrow, winds in Nome and partly cloudy skies with patchy ice fog in Fort Yukon, 24 below for the high there. Here in the interior, We'll be looking at fog clearing at Fairbanks, finally. Flurries and warmer temperatures in the Healy area. Down to the southeastern sections, again, a lot of snow expected around Juneau, three to seven inches expected there, with a <clears throat> couple inches uh, possible for Ketchikan. And over to the southwest part of the state, out over the Bering Sea, also snow at Bethel, rain developing for Cold Bay and Kodiak. That's right, rain with 40 degrees at Cold Bay. And in the south central regions, light snow at Anchorage and Homer, a couple inches of snow for Valdez. Well, once again, it's time for our kids' weather. It's a new week, and we have a new school to introduce you to. This one is Tukasuk Brown Elementary School, and tonight a young lady with a story about a storm in Mexico. In August 2010, my mom, my brother, and I went to see our family in Mexico. A few days after we got there, it rained and flooded. We had to sweep the rain off the porch. Thank you, Kaylee. And tomorrow night, thanks to Mount McKinley Bank, we'll have another guest here uh, talking about a weather picture that she drew. All right, now what's going on? Our forecast for tonight, 31 below, not as cold, but still dense ice fog as possible. So please remember to keep your lights on during the day. That's the most important thing we can pass along. 10 below for the high tomorrow, considerably warmer, with some clouds and flurries, flurries possible on uh, later on in the afternoon. And the extended forecast, this is the good news, 10 above by Wednesday, 13 by Thursday, and 15 by Friday, a little bit cooler into the weekend. And all five days we'll be looking at a possibility of some light snow, but overnight lows, Five above to zero, that's a darn sight better than the 51 we had below we had last night, right guys? Yes. Uh, I've seen no <laughs> negative signs. I am yeah. taking that to 
to the bank. Yeah. <laughs> Shorts weather. You should know about negative signs, right? That's right. You should too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We went to the sign and we took the picture. We're in the 50 yeah. below club, Joe. Actually, I'm in the or 38 40. below. Okay, 38 we're below. close enough. Okay, very good. <laughs> All right. That'll wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. As always, we are glad you could join us. Tonight on NBC Nightly News, the hor on the horrific scene of a nightclub fire in Brazil. That's next with Brian Williams. Be sure and check us out online at webcenter11.com, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And remember that Stephanie will be out for you if, you're not get, if you don't have those headlights Leave on, Leave those right? headlights on, <laughs> folks. Right. It's very important. Mm -hmm. very <laughs> That'll important. do it from all of us here at the News Center. Please stay warm and be safe tonight, and we'll see you back here at 11. Keep your headlights on.